All right, guys, today I'm going to show you some iPhone tricks that you're going to kick yourself for not knowing sooner. And the first one is that your iPhone actually has a hidden trackpad. If you've ever written a long message or note on your iPhone, you know that it can be a little bit tedious to try to get your cursor exactly where you want it to go. So you can actually use the built-in trackpad. And all you need to do is tap and hold on the space bar. And now your iPhone acts like a trackpad. And you can see that you can move it very precisely to anywhere you want. And then you can start adding text and then move it again wherever you need. This is definitely a very convenient feature and it will even work in other applications like text messages or your emails. If you've ever reorganized your iPhone's home screen or added or removed any icons, what you might be doing is tapping and holding on each icon individually and then moving it around to wherever you want to do. Well, I'm gonna tell you to never do that again because what you can do instead is actually tap and hold on an icon and then tap on all the other icons that you want to move and you can see it gets added into this little tray right here and you can move them all at the same time and you can see they get all moved at the same time so you don't need to do this one by one anymore this is going to save you a lot of time and what's really cool is you can actually do this in other apps like photos and even in google images so if you go to google search for any image tap and hold on it and wiggle it around you can start adding images to it just like that now we can do is go ahead and take these images and maybe send them to a friend so they can get some cool pictures of chickens if you often play with your phone settings like I do, instead of having to always tap into the settings and then navigate around here, what you can actually do is tap and hold on it for a second and you can see it gives you a list of a few popular options. So if you need to go into your phone's battery, you can do it directly from here instead of having to navigate within the app. You can also quickly go back to a previous setting page by tapping and holding on here. And to show you what it looks like, let's say we go to accessibility, go down to keyboards, full keyboard access, commands. And now you can see we're pretty far into the settings menu and instead of having to constantly tap back, what we can do is actually tap on hold on this and you can see it gives us a list of all of the previous settings pages and if we want to go all the way back to settings all we need to do is just let go and there you go it takes us straight to settings the next tip you might not know about is that your iphone can scan documents now to do this all you need to do is go to your notes app create a new note and then open up the camera icon and you can see it says scan documents. So if you tap on that, it'll open up your camera and now you can scan any document. And I use this quite often to scan receipts because I hate keeping track of them and I often misplace them or lose them. So now all I need to do is just scan my receipt and it'll save it on my phone. And I always have a virtual copy of my receipt. So I never have that problem of losing them again. All right, guys, the next tip you might not know about that you should be using is the ability to link focus modes to your lock screens. So you can see I have three different lock screens on here. And if you go in to edit any of these lock screens, you see there's this little focus button down here. And what I can do is tap on the focus button and then link this lock screen to my fitness focus. So now every time I go to the gym, I can just enable this lock screen and we'll go into my fitness focus mode. And then of course you can link all of your other lock screens to any of your other focus modes. And every time you select that lock screen, it will enable that focus mode. Now, a really cool feature that Apple brought to the iPhone in iOS 16 is the ability to enable haptics. So if you go into your phone settings, head over to sound and haptics and then tap on keyboard feedback, you can see you can actually enable haptic mode. Androids have had this feature for a very long time, but iPhones recently got it. And if you've never tried haptic feedback, I definitely suggest you enable it and give it a try because it feels really nice to have that little vibration every time you tap on a key. And if you've never tried it before, go ahead and enable it and let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you like it or not really? The next feature you guys need to start using on your iPhone is better screenshot management. So when you take a screenshot on your iPhone, you can see you get this thumbnail down here. And instead of tapping on it and then going up here to share and then sharing it this way, what you can do is tap and hold on the thumbnail for a second and you can quickly share it this way. But if you don't want to pollute your phone with all sorts of different screenshots and you only took the screenshot maybe because you wanted to quickly send something to somebody and you don't actually want the screenshot on your phone, what you can do is tap on the thumbnail right here and then tap on done. And then you can see you get this option here that says copy and delete. And if you tap on this, it will actually delete the screenshot, but copy it to your clipboard. So now you can go ahead and email or send this screenshot to whoever you want. It will send it to them, but it will delete it from your phone. So you're not stuck with a whole bunch of screenshots you don't need in your camera roll. All right, guys, this next feature is a lifesaver. Instead of having to scroll all the way up to the top of your photos because you want to go to your very first photo, all you need to do is tap on the top left corner up here and you can see it shoots directly up to the top of your photos. And if you ever want to go back down, instead of scrolling, all you need to do is tap on the albums or whichever tab you're in and you can see it takes you straight to the bottom. And it will work in any app, including any social media apps like Facebook or Instagram. And even on Chrome, if you're reading a really long article and let's say, you know, you're on a Wikipedia page and you're you know somewhere all the way down at the bottom instead of having to scroll all the way up all you need to do is tap up here around your clock area you can see it shoots all the way up to the top definitely saves you a lot of time and just makes navigating around your phone so so much easier 
One thing I really don't like about the iPhone keyboard is there's no row up here for numbers. So if you're ever typing something like an address and you need to keep jumping between uh, the number keyboard and your regular keyboard, it can get quite annoying, but there's actually an easier way to access the secondary keyboard. And all you need to do is tap and drag on this and you can see it brings up the numbers up here. All you need to do is select the number and it'll go right back to your normal keyboard and you can continue typing. And then again, if you need another number, you can just do that and keep accessing it that way without having to constantly toggle between these. All right guys, and the final tip is that you can actually stack your widgets. So you can see I have three widgets here, but that's taking up a lot of space on my home screen. And maybe you don't want that. Maybe you would rather have more space for your applications. So what you can actually do is tap and hold on your widgets until they bounce and then just drag them on top of each other. And you can see that they all stack together and you have more space here for your icons. So you can bring more applications into here. And if you ever want to access all of your widgets, all you need to do is just toggle between them by scrolling like that. And now you have access to all of your widgets while also giving a lot more space for all of your applications. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Let me know if you learned something and leave a comment down below if you have any more cool iPhone tips and tricks that maybe other people don't know. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.